You're watching Chicago Bears now. I've got a lot of rumors to get into, including a juicy Tom Brady one. You're going to want to stick around for that one. But first, I want you guys to subscribe to the channel. We've been growing a lot the past couple of weeks now that the season is back. Help us get to 12,000 subs as soon as possible. We're less than 600 away. Help us get there ASAP so we can continue to grow here on the channel. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we got to dig into this story of the Bears apparently wanting Tom Brady this offseason. Now, there was a little chatter of that. We certainly explored it here on Chicago Bears Now once Tom Brady made it clear that, A, he was going to test free agency, and then when he really made it clear, when he set, announced that he would not be returning to New England. But now, Ian Rappaport, and this story just slipped through the cracks, by the way, uh, claims, according to his sources, that the Bears actually offered him a contract during free agency. I don't remember seeing that at all back in March or April or whatever the hell all that was because I'm pretty sure that didn't that didn't seep through the cracks. And apparently he was intrigued, but when it came down to it, he didn't want to play in cold weather. That was part of the reason why he left New England. Obviously, he ended up opting for Tampa Bay. Here's more on Rappaport's write-up on this, saying, as for the Bears, they looked into all the available quarterbacks before eventually trading for Nick Foles. Brady was one of them, and Chicago made an offer, sources say. While there was a lot to like, Brady didn't warm to the idea of playing in the cold again, leaving the Chargers and Bucks as the finalists. Now, here's the crazy part as we look at the teams that were most interested, apparently, in Brady. There were certainly a couple of others. Uh, the 49ers and the Raiders had an interest as well. Uh, but the crazy part about this, you guys see the Saints on the screen? I know this is uh, uh, Chicago Bears now. We're not going to spend 20 minutes on the Saints. Apparently, if Drew Brees had retired, which many of us thought he might, they were ready to bring Tom Brady on board, and he was ready to go to New Orleans. That is wild. I don't know how this whole story just kind of got swept under the rug over the past 48 hours, but I'm talking about it here on Chicago Bears now because I think it's fascinating that the Bears actually offered him, that the Saints were ready to bring him on board to replace Drew Brees had he retired. Obviously, once Brees announced he was coming back, that changed, but uh, this is insane to me. Now, his first start with uh, the Bucks, ironically, against New Orleans, eh, so-so, 23-36, 239, a couple of touchdowns, two picks, including a pick six. Uh, but this is fascinating because we talked about quarterbacks quite a bit this offseason here on Chicago Bears Now. Should they get Cam Newton, Nick Foles, Andy Dalton? Uh, I can't even remember all the quarterbacks we talked about. We talked about Brady. like, And ultimately, Chicago traded for Nick Foles. But the fact that they offered Brady, that is very, very interesting. Now, I'll make this the pinned comment on this video. I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Do you wish the Bears landed Tom Brady? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Keep in mind, 43 years old, factor that in when you reply to the pinned comment. Let's get to something more practical and more likely here. How about signing Snacks Harrison? I continue to preach this because I don't know about you guys, but the Bears' run defense got gashed on Sunday, and that's largely due to, let's be honest, and this is no offense to Bilal Nichols, they don't have a true nose tackle. Not with Eddie Goldman opting out. They do not have a true nose tackle on this defense right now. They're trying Nichols there. They're certainly rotating John Jenkins in. Roy Robertson Harris is getting a few snaps there. But Damon Harrison is a different animal. And I'll tell you what, man. I, I love Adrian Peterson. The guy's a Hall of Famer. But he's 47 years old just about. And he's averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry when he's been with the Lions for like 20 minutes. Like, come on. Like, that is a problem for the Bears moving forward. They are going to face much better rushing attacks than the Detroit Lions. I'll tell you that right now. What was the ongoing joke? The Lions had like... 40 games in a row without a 100-yard rusher or whatever. Like, they're historically one of the worst rushing attacks in the NFL, and this defensive line got pushed around by Detroit. Like, that, that that's not – that's a significant red flag to me. That's a big problem moving forward here. And Snacks is not an elite player anymore. I'm not preaching that. I'm not saying he's going to come in here and be an all-pro. But isn't he worth taking a look at? He's 350 pounds. 
He's, his name's Snacks for crying out loud. Like, the guy eats up run blockers. Like, this is a guy you want on your defense if you're trying to stop the run. And the Bears did not do that in week one. And quite frankly, the defense as a whole, not that great against Detroit. How worried are you about this Bears defense? Scale it from 1 to 10, 1 being not at all. This is going to be the 85 Bears. 10 being, eh, this defense might suck. I'm only at like a 5, but like... That was not a good first performance. I need to see more. The defense needs to improve. I think adding a guy like Snacks Harrison could help in a major, major way. What could also help you guys out and help us all out as we want to go back and watch Bears football in person, wear a face mask. You can get one on sale. A lot of these are on sale at chatsports.com slash Bears masks. You can get the solo packs all the way up to the four packs. And yes, we got player packs as well. I'll put that link in the comments and in the description, chatsports.com slash Bears masks. I want to go to a game at Soldier Field. That's not a reality right now because of the coronavirus. So wear a mask, do your part, and let's get back into our arenas and stadiums as soon as possible. Mo Mooney, no problems. Uh, how about Darnell Mooney, guys? I loved what I saw in the opener. Three catches, 38 yards, and uh, the coaches liked it as well. Matt Nagy talked about it on Monday, how uh, you know he kind of hinted to me that uh, he's going to get more snaps than wide receiver coach Mike Fury said. It's like he's a five-year veteran, and we heard that a lot in camp, right? How he's got a he, he's got a professional mindset. It's he does not act like a rookie. He's not immature. Limited opportunities, 21 snaps, took advantage, right? One out of every seven snaps, he caught a pass. And by the way, we knew this guy was fast, straight line speed-wise. He made guys miss, too. He's got some wiggle in space. It's not just, you know, deep balls or something like that. He can juke. He is really, really good after the catch as well. I like this kid, man. I think he's going to be a big-time player in the NFL, and I hope the Bears continue to get him involved. This was the snap counts for the receivers. Obviously, A-Rob played about 90% of the snaps. Pretty split after that, though, right? I fully expect Anthony Miller to continue to get more snaps. He came up big in the second half. Uh, but if it's me, I'm, I'm, I'm catching into Ted Ginn's snaps with Darnell Moody. Uh, I mean, right now, Ted Ginn, he's still wide receiver three. He got a uh, wide receiver three type of snaps, but I'm getting Mooney more opportunities moving forward because he can change the game with his elite speed. Ginn still has some speed. Darnell Mooney, though, that kid's on the rise. I'm telling you, he is coming. Who should be wide receiver three? Type DM for Darnell Mooney. Type JW for Javon Wims, who had a one-yard touchdown catch. TG for Ted Ginn and RR for Riley Ridley, who was inactive in week one. I'm on the Mooney train, guys. Mo Mooney, less problems. That's a, I'm going to type my DM there. So is the Bears O-line good? After one week, they are. I, you know, we talked about it all offseason. I think a lot of you guys would admit, got to be pretty impressed so far. I mean, Detroit, look, that's not an elite defense by any means, but so far so good, right? Especially in the run game. There was a couple of times when Mitch dropped back that uh, the O-line got beat a little bit, but I thought they held their own in a pretty good way. It wasn't, you know, the uh, peak Dallas Cowboys from a few years ago or something like that, but this was a more than serviceable offensive line in week one, and you got to be pretty pleased, especially when you look at the running game numbers. Look at the yards per carry here. Five yards per carry for Montgomery, who wasn't 100%. Six yards per carry for Cohen. Uh, Patterson on his four carries. Uh, average almost five yards. Trubisky got loose on a couple of scrambles. Like, this offensive line, especially in the run game, but overall was really, really good. Only gave up one sack, and that's because Mitch lost his mind and tried to make a crazy play happen, and he lost 28 yards. That was not on the offensive line. This Bears O line in week one, got to give it a B plus, right? Like, I, I thought it was really, really good. Go ahead and grade it for me uh, in the comment section, A, B, C, D, or F. You can use pluses, you can use minus, however you want to grade it. Go ahead and do that right now. Just type your votes. I'm giving it a B plus. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with what I saw from the big bullies up front. Lil Mac is back. Ladarius Mac onto the practice squad. The Bears announced this move. I uh, just wanted to get this in before we wrap up here on today's episode of Chicago Bears. Now, Khalil Mack's little brother is back in the fold. They release Abdullah Anderson, the vet, to make room on the 16-man practice squad. This is a good sign. Look, a, a young player with some talent gets an opportunity to develop. It keeps Khalil happy, certainly. I was surprised when he wasn't on the initial practice squad. I think this is a good move for everybody involved. So we'll 
we'll see if he ever develops into something. I'm Harrison Graham. I'm signing off. You guys can tweet your thoughts at me, at HGramNFL. We'll see you next time.